Hi, this is Maria Olson. You may know me from Trophy Heads or Starry Eyes and maybe Paranormal Activity 3. And I want to welcome you to Anthony T's Horror Show because it's an awesome show. Hi, my name is Jessica Cameron and you're listening to Anthony T's Horror Show. Hey, fellow horror fans. This is Troy Escamilla, the director of Party Night and Mrs. Claus. And you are listening to Anthony T's Horror Show. Enjoy. Welcome to another edition of Anthony T's Horror Show. I am back after a brief vacation. As you may have noticed, last episode was the best of show. In this edition of Anthony T's Horror Show, I will be talking about the life and career of Sid Haig, plus my convention memories with Sid Haig. Along with that, I will also have a preview of Rock and Shock, which will be taking place at the DCU Center in Worcester Palladium, October 11th through the 13th in Worcester, Massachusetts, as Andrew Duran from Docus Before Dawn podcast will be joining me in an open discussion on the upcoming convention. But first, I go away hoping that Jason Blum would not rear his ugly head about his upcoming film Halloween Kills. And guess what happens? There is news about Halloween Kills. I had this show all planned out. Where I was going to start with Couples Therapy, which I tease on the official Facebook page of the podcast. But, yet, there's more news for Halloween Kills. This film never seems to want to leave the show. It's like the Child's Play reboot. It does not want to leave until it gets released. I do not need to be talking about Halloween Kills for the next year. Seriously. As this is getting to be overkill. As every episode. As you may notice. Starts off with Halloween Kills. Case in point. There's been a couple of cast additions to Halloween Kills. First. They are bringing back the character Lonnie Elm. From the original Halloween. This time he's being played by Robert Longstreet. Who can be seen in the upcoming film Doctor Sleep. Which comes out in November. And if that wasn't enough Halloween kills. They are bringing back Nancy Stevens. Who played uh, Marion Chambers in the first Halloween film. It's like they're bringing all the original characters from the first Halloween film into this film. You got Tommy Doyle. You got Lindsay Wallace coming back. You have Sheriff Brackett. Allegedly coming back. And I stress allegedly because it's a rumor. Now you have Lonnie Elm coming back from the original film. What is next? Seriously. Extra number five coming back? Or maybe they'll find a way to resurrect Judith Myers? All I gotta say about this new Halloween film that's coming out, Halloween Kills. This is either going to succeed or this is going to fail miserably. Because personally, I don't know why you're bringing back all the characters from the original Halloween film. Move on. What I liked about the Halloween reboot was the fact that you only had Jamie Lee Curtis come back from the original Halloween. You do not need Every character that survived the original Halloween to be in a Halloween reboot. I really don't know what David Gordon Green or Danny McBride are doing here. But this is going to either work out very good and I'm going to be totally wrong. And I'm going to like what they're doing. Or this has the potential of being 
not so good. Because I don't feel comfortable having too many returning characters from the original Halloween in the sequel. I would have ha liked it if it was spaced out more. But it seems like their intent are bringing every character that was in the original Halloween into Halloween Kills. My fear is they're bringing them back to kill them all off. If that's the case, then why bother bringing them back at all? Seriously. So I cannot wait to see how they're going to do this. But if they're bringing these characters back to get killed off, it is completely a waste of time when they could be developing a new path for the franchise. I don't mind seeing these characters again, but really feels like they're bringing them back to be killed off. Quite frankly, that's just my opinion. I could be totally wrong here. I just don't like the idea of having every character come back from the original film that's still alive. As I'd rather have the story focus on Laurie Strode, her daughter, and her granddaughter. I liked it the first time around. I think that's what the story should be. And I feel like adding all these characters from the original Halloween into Halloween Kills is going to take away from that story from the first film. Maybe it's just me, but it just feels like it. Enough Halloween Kills news. Let's move on to something else. How about the story that I teased on the official Facebook page of the podcast? That's right, Couples Therapy. I promise you I'd talk about Couples Therapy on this episode of Anthony T's Horror Show. And here it is. As A24 recently announced that they are giving away three months of free Couples Therapy. Yes, you heard it right. A24 is looking to give away three months of free couples therapy. This is all in conjunction with the upcoming DVD and Blu-ray release of Midsummer, film that I haven't checked out yet. But I can't wait to check out, but wow. Three months of couples therapy. That A24 and Talkspace have teamed up to bring you three months of free couples therapy. And it's going to three winning couples. So you can be one of three couples to receive three months of couples therapy. And oh, by the way, Midsummer comes out on DVD and Blu-ray October 8th. And if you have Apple TV, you can watch the extended director's cut of Midsummer right now. Gotta love it when a studio tries to do a gimmick. You know how I ranted about Orion Pitches releasing Child's Play the same day as Toy Story 4. And I screamed, gimmick. This is a pure example of a gimmick to get people to buy the film. Don't worry, I'm going to buy the film. Now, I am single, so this does not apply to me. But I do ask the question to A24. Why couldn't you partner up with Talkspace to give away three months a bad movie therapy because I still have some films that never seems to escape my mind. Let's see. We got James Wan's Dead Silence, a film which I went to see in theaters and it was 90 minutes of pure boredom with a very predictable ending and predictable twist. Then you got the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, which I saw also in theaters, which was by far Quite possibly the worst film I've ever seen. If it was not for Battlefield Earth with John Travolta as an alien and no logic in this screenplay. As that film was an unfilmable film, but I had to sit through the film. And that still brings bad memories to this day. Even if I saw this film for cheap, I still want my money for seeing Battlefield Earth. God, you can get free couples therapy, but not free bad movie therapy. Because I really need it. Especially having to sit through Godzilla King of the Monsters this year and Darren Lynn Browseman say Agatha. It would be nice to have some bad movie therapy so I can get rid of these films out of my head. But I'm probably going to talk about it again when I talk about the worst films of 2019. Even though it's been a really good year for films. 
But there's been really a couple of bad ones, and I just laid them out. So with that, that's the news. Now for my show announcement. If you go to Anthony T's Horror Show on Facebook, for the month of October, I will be doing a fundraiser on my Facebook page. At Anthony T's Horror Show, go there, scroll down maybe a couple posts, you will see that there's a fundraiser going on. And in this fundraiser, I will be raising money for Scares That Cares this October. The goal is to reach $400. I know this is very ambitious for a first-time fundraising, but this is one of a few charities that I really, truly support, and I'm really wanting to reach $400 in honor of my 40th birthday this upcoming October. So that's why I set the goal at $400. But I added a couple stretch goals to this fundraiser. If I raise at least $200, I will try my best to get a named personality onto this podcast. You know, I like to talk to people in independent filmmaking. But I will go out my way to try to get a name that used people know. And I will interview that person on a podcast in the first quarter of 2020. That's if we reach $200. I will do my absolute best to fulfill that promise. If we reach the $400 goal. Now you know I hate this movie with passion. You know I swore I would never see this film. And I've kept to my word. I have not seen this film yet. But if we raise $400... Not only will I get you try to get that name guest on a future episode of Anthony T's Horror Show, quite possibly first quarter 2020, I will rent the Child's Play reboot. I will watch the Child's Play reboot. And I will review the Child's Play reboot here on the podcast. So, if this fundraiser tops $400, I will review the recent Child's Play reboot on this podcast, I will swallow my pride, I will watch the film, and I will give you my thoughts on it. That's if we reach $400. Now, this goes until November 2nd, by 12 a.m. November 2nd, Eastern Time, to be exact. Once it turns into November 3rd, a.k.a. Day 3 of Rhode Island Comic Con, it's over. If we don't meet the goal, we don't meet the goal, you don't get a review of Child's Play if we don't meet $400. If we meet at least $200, I'll try and get a name that you guys know very well on the show. It could, it'll be some major horror-related name. And I will try to get that interview by the first quarter of 2020. But it's all up to you. So go to www.facebook.com slash Anthony T's Horror Show and donate to my Scares That Cares fundraiser. For more information on Scares That Cares, you can go to www.scaresthatcare.org. Here's the Scares That Care commercial that I exclusively made for this podcast. Every day there's a family struggling with hospital bills to care for their sick child who is fighting an illness. There's a woman who is fighting breast cancer and is having trouble making ends meet while paying for their treatment. And there are burn victims that are going through treatments to heal their deep wounds. There is a charity in the horror community that helps these people. Scares That Care is an organization that helps families deal with the bills for their child. They help women get the treatment they need to fight breast cancer. And they help people who are dealing with severe burns get the help they need to heal. Scares That Care is a 100% volunteer organization and 501c3 nonprofit charity that is dedicated to helping these people in fighting real monsters. To find out more information or to donate to Scares That Care, you can go to www.scaresthatcare.org. Every donation helps Scares That Care fight real monsters. Besides Anthony T's Horror Show, you can also listen to these other fine podcasts on the Doc Discussions Network. 
Doc Discussions, hosted by Phil Perron and Michael Darwin. You Know Nothing, Jon Snow, a Game of Thrones podcast. Bullets, Brothels, and Bots, a Westworld podcast. Halloween Boutique, Psychotronic Reviews. And Searching for American Gods. You can find Doc Discussions on the web at www.docdiscussions.com and Doc Discussions is also available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. Welcome back to Anthony T's Horror Show. Between episodes, we lost an icon of horror who was really one of the nicest people that you would ever meet on the convention scene, and that is Sid Haig. He sadly passed away on September 21st. No details on his death. It was really sad when I woke up that morning to hear the news. It really kind of killed the day for me. As I met him a couple months ago, and I will talk more about that later in this segment, as I will also talk about my cu- a couple of convention experiences I had with him. But he was a very good actor. He started his filmmaking career in 1960, appearing in a bunch of 60s TV shows, including The Untouchables, Star Trek, Batman, The Man from U.N.C.L.E. He would also first take notice in a couple of Jack Hill films, Bloodbath, Spider Baby, and Pit Stop. He would go on to do some more TV work in the late 60s, early 70s, Pairing on shows such as The Flying Nun, Gunsmoke, Get Smart, and Mission Impossible. He would also appear in a, in a bit role in the James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever. The 70s, he would be in such exploitation films such as Coffee, Oxy Brown, Savage Sisters, while also doing more TV work as well. Pairing on shows such as Mary Hotman, Mary Hotman, Police Story, and Charlie's Angels. In the early 80s, he would also do a film called Galaxy of Terror, which is one of my favorite Sid Haig films, as he plays a mute character in the film. It's a very underrated performance, even though the film is a typical B-movie from Roger Corman. I still enjoyed Sid Haig in the film, then he wouldn't do anything major until 1997 when he appeared in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown playing a judge. Then six years later, he would finally get the recognition that he deserves as he played the horror icon Captain Spaulding in House of a Thousand Corpses for Rob Zombie. He would also be in other various Rob Zombie horror films too, including Halloween, The Devil's Rejects, The Lords of Salem, and most recently, Three from Hell. He's also appeared in such films as Kill Bill Volume 2 for Quentin Tarantino, Hatchet 3 for Adam Green, and Death House, which was, I think, one of the best scenes in the film, in which Sid Haig played Icicle Killer. It is really tragic that he passed away, as this was very unexpected, as everybody was starting to think he was doing well again. But this is one of those things that really hits me, because he was there for us horror fans, and was also a very good person. Having seen him at three conventions, Terracon in Providence, Rhode Island, 2017, then six months later in Springfield, Massachusetts for Scarecon, New England, in which until I watched the Dawkins tribute to Sid Haig, forgot that he really ha- did a good job at the VIP party there. It was when I brought the VIP for Scarecon, New England, since now your are is going as press. But it was a fun time at that party. Sid was having a fun time as well. It was something I literally totally forgot about him singing 
at the VIP party until I saw the video Dorkening's tribute to Sid Haig. And I totally forgot about that moment. I don't know why, but it really brought some very good memories of that convention there. Plus, of Sid Haig, because he was a good person. I don't know why I totally forgot about that VIP party. Because for the first two years at Scarecon New England, I would get the VIP package. And they would always have entertainment with celebrities at the VIP party. And how I totally forgot about Sid Haig singing there is beyond me. But I remember having a very good time there. And it really was a fun moment at that party. As there are other couple fun moments too. Which I'm not going to talk about since this is all about Sid Haig. Now, Sid was a regular on the horror convention scene. He really made sure his fans were happy. And he was one of those people that would not charge an arm and a leg like some celebs do at these conventions. He really was truly there for his fans. And he was definitely there for scares that care. Because I've heard of such... The great work that he's done for that organization. He was a very nice person. As I had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times on the convention scene. First back in 2017 at TerrorCon in Providence, Rhode Island. It was really fun meeting him. Even though I literally botched my the photo op like with him three, four times, as I had him sign my Devil's Rejects DVD. I'll go more to that in a little bit. Then met him again two months ago at Scares That Cares Weekend 6. He seemed to be in very good spirits, even though he really wasn't looking well. But it's just, it really shocked me to the core a little bit. Because, first of all... You find out first thing in the morning, which is usually never a good thing. When you find some celeb that you loved passed away. And second, I just met him like two months ago at Scaresack Care Weekend 6. Which really, I think, made it more devastating for me. Because you only have one life. That person can be here today, gone tomorrow. In an instant. And it really bugged me throughout the whole day. I decided to put in one of his old films, a film called Galaxy of Terror, where he played a supporting role in, but kind of notable supporting role too, in my opinion. But when I was watching Galaxy of Terror, I all of a sudden started writing about my experiences with Sid Haig. And I shared it with friends in local horror fans in the Providence area. And I'm going to read what I wrote, too. Because this is one thing that I just was writing, and I kept writing. So I'm going to read what I posted on my personal Facebook page and over on the PVD Horror Facebook group. As I kind of wanted to share it also with local horror fans as well from Providence. It starts off with, I'm feeling a little in shock over the passing of Sid Haig because I saw the guy just seven weeks ago, even though he wasn't looking well, but he he made the time to come down to Williamsburg, Virginia to be with his fans and help Scares That Cares, a charity and Convention that helps families with sick children, women with breast cancer, and burn victims. Which he is very generous from all accounts I heard. He also did the Captain Spaulding photo op at the convention. Which might have been his last one. But I'm not 100% positive on that. Which I also did. I was lucky enough to come across Sid three times on the con scene. First in February 2017 at Terracon in Providence, Rhode Island, where I first met him. I had him sign my DVD copy of The Devil's Rejects and also had a photo with him. The photo didn't go to plan as I wanted 
as I was trying to be a jackass and wanted to hold up my middle fingers and Sid didn't like that. I meant that wasn't a cool thing to do, but I wanted to be creative with it. I finally got a signature post on the fourth try. Now, the second convention I met Sid was June of that year in Springfield, Massachusetts, with Scarecon, New England, at a screening for Death House, which was making its world premiere. I didn't have a time to stop by his table at that convention, as most of the time I was spending. I was pretty much hanging out with the Doc Discussions podcast and the Dorkening tables. And plus, I met him a couple months earlier, so it really didn't make sense to see him again. Then I would not see him again until seven weeks ago at Scares That Care Weekend 6. Going into this con, I was debating doing his photo op. I knew that I was going to be doing the Joe Bob Briggs and Dossie photo op no matter what. I wasn't trying to go overboard with spending on this convention, but one thing came to me on Sid Haig's photo op. This may be my only chance to do a Sid Haig photo op in costume and makeup, as he was up there in age and he may not come back to the New England area. So I decided to do it even though I didn't believe he was going to die and be gone from us this soon. When I met him at his table, I picked up an autograph since I wanted his three from a hell mugshot so badly after getting Bill Mosley's mugshot last year at Danbury, Connecticut for CT Horror Fest. While I was at Sid's table, I noticed he wasn't looking good as I could tell on his face. Plus, he didn't look like he was walking good either. But still, he was in high spirits and having a great time meeting his fans and doing the Captain Spaulding costume photo op in full makeup, which he didn't have to do at his age and his health. But he really loved Scares That Care so much that he did it. Sid Haig was one of the nicest people you would meet at a convention as he would never raise his price one cent. Considering he could have charged $30, $40, or $50, as Captain Spaulding is an iconic character in horror, and he would always make sure you could have a table photo op with him for no charge, which is unheard of these days. Sid Haig is someone who will truly be missed by his friends, his family, and everyone in the horror community. At this time, I would like to extend... My condolences to Sid Haig's family and his friends, as Sid Haig is truly an icon that will truly be missed by everyone who loves horror. Want to learn more about horror directors? With a lighthearted look at three of their movies, meet fearless podcaster Gore Blimey. I've been unsettled by bats in the past and startled by parrots, and I've even been known to jump at the odd cockatoo. Discover horror films that are classics, and others, too. There's a topless aerobics massacre, an exploding rock singer, cannibals, nude martial arts, a deep fried prostitute. But it's not all silliness. You'll get proper movie breakdowns, opinion, and background information, too. Yep, in the 80s and 90s, Jeff Stryker was huge in gay porn. In every sense. So if you're a horror film fan, come and check out the Trilogy of Terror podcast at strangeanddeadly.com or find it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or on your podcatcher. One of those people that has a certain charisma and a certain style, and I'm just hoping one day he'll rub off on me. The Trilogy of Terror podcast, where we try three times harder to give you the willies. Hey guys, this is Steven Christina. I'm the founder, owner, creator, and host of Super Retro Throwback Reviews. Are you looking for the best movie reviews, music reviews, video game reviews, and Comic-Con coverage all around? Well then look no further. Definitely check out Super Retro Throwback Reviews on YouTube and our new audio podcast, the new and improved Super Retro Throwback Reviews Audio Files version 2.0 on the following media distributors. Podbean, Google Play, Stitchers, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. 
Spotify. Class is over, John. Time for something new and improved. Welcome back to Anthony T's Horror Show. I'm here with Andrew Durant from Darkest Before Dawn podcast. As we're here to talk about Rock and Shock 2019, which takes place at the DCU Center in Worcester Palladium on October 11th through the 13th. We're going to pretty much be talking about the convention portion of the show. If you want to find out who's playing at the Worcester Palladium, I highly suggest you go over to rockandshock.com as they have already announced all three dates for their music festival. So check that page out. How are you doing today, Andrew? Hey, good. How's it doing, Anthony? Very good. Now, Rock and Chuck is the premier horror convention here in the New England area, as it's going to be celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. And they do have a very big lineup. This is probably one of their biggest lineups in years. And it starts off with The King, Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I, I want to say, like, right away, too, that the last couple of years at Rock and Shock seemed a little off, um, you know, from previous years and everything. And this year, like you just mentioned, they do have a big, big lineup. This is a very crazy big lineup. And uh, I really hope they put out an autograph price list for this convention, because if not, we're all going to be broke. Yeah, pretty much so. <laughs> and I'm going to be running around getting video for the YouTube channel. And also getting interviews for a show in October. As usually, October is usually a big month here on Anthony T's Horror Show. As you get not one, not two, but three shows. And if you're lucky, I may even do a fourth show this month. It all depends on everything. But I can guarantee you at least three. So, what are your favorite Bruce Campbell films? Uh, definitely the Evil Dead movies. Uh, those are definitely my favorite ones by him. Now, even though he's a he's a well he's a well rounded actor, but you know, I love the Evil Dead films, and I'm very excited to meet him this October at Rock and Shock. For me, I would have to say, of course, the Evil Dead films, but there's also a couple of films that also would fit as great Bruce Campbell films. The first one would be Bubba Hotep, where he plays Elvis. That film was literally a riot. From start to finish, he's great in the role. Another film would be Maniac Cop, which starred him in Tom Atkins. That film is very good. I highly suggest you check this film out on Blu-ray. And another film is that doesn't give you the typical Bruce Campbell performance, but shows that the guy has range, is Lucky McKee's The Woods. It was a film that really showed that Bruce Campbell has some range beyond the usual slapstick that is showcased in many of his films. And it's truly a very underrated Lucky McKee film as well. I highly suggest you check that film out and find it on Amazon because that is a very gothic film which deserves people's attention. The next guests... Let's not uh, forget to mention that Bruce is only going to be there Saturday, Sundays, too. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's excited about Bruce. Rock and Shock, everybody's been wanting to get Bruce Campbell at Rock and Shock for the longest time, and they finally got him, and you know, it's just a big deal. So Yeah, and the amazing thing about that is they announced that all the way in March, I, I was so, which was like a major shock. I, I was very shocked by that because last year's at Rock and Shock, they didn't release guests until... Um, August. Oh, August, yeah, the end of August. It was really late. So when they released Bruce Campbell in March, I was like, oh, this is going to be a year, I'm telling you. Yeah, it's definitely going to be one of the best conventions. The next guests are the ladies of the Evil Dead. If you're going to bring Bruce Campbell, you also have to bring the ladies from the Evil Dead as well. Yeah, that's another, that was another um, that was another great guest thing. And they're also only going to be there Saturday, Sunday, too, with Bruce. So, like, you know, if you definitely can't Bruce, you know, you might as well get the ladies from the Evil Dead, too. Now, I wish they were doing a photo op with all of them together. Though, they may do that. Oh, the really? Well, they don't announce photo ops until, like, week of the week before the show. As they also release the panel schedule around that same time, too. That would be a really kick-ass photo so op. So, we won't be going into photo ops or panel discussions in this preview. As I can uh, probably speculate a couple of panels that will probably be happening but i'll save that to like the end of this preview 
But it is great that they are coming to Rock and Shock, and I believe it's the first time that they are coming there. Yeah, I believe so, too, as, uh, along with Bruce. I think that's his first time, too. So, you know, that was another great um, first-time guest to get for the show, too. There are a lot of first-time guests here this year, which I think is really what make, is making this convention very good this year. Yeah, definitely, because it's been around for so long, and, you know, to bring in a first-time guest is, like, you know... But to bring time. multiple first time guests. Yeah, right. To bring multiple first time guests. And the show's been, you know, it's been around for so long, you know, to bring in like first time guests is really cool, you know? Keeps it fresh. They're also going to be bringing in Bill Mosley, who's always seems like he's there every year. Yeah, Bill Mosley. Very cool last. person. I love Bill Mosley. Such a cool guy. You can get his mugshot from Three from Hell, too, there, most likely. Yeah, that's guy. Um, last year when I met him at Rock and Shock, that's how I got my mugshot from him. It was there. Such an awesome guy. Really nice to his fans. He is. And I'm in the market of collecting three from hell mug shots. Yeah, so, so if you need them. I've got two of them already. <laughs> if you need one, there, then he's going to be there. And he'll Including have the recently departed Sid Haig, which was a bummer. Yeah, that, that sucked. Next up is another first-time guest, Ray Wise. I'm surprised he hasn't been at Rock and Shock. I know you were super excited for this guest. Um, Leland Palmer coming <laughs> to Rock and Shock. I w- I'm excited for it too. He, you know, Ray Wise is a great actor. I love them in Jeepers Creepers too. That was my favorite from him. My favorites are obviously Twin Peaks because um, he really made Leland Palmer a very weird and s- sinister character. And it's Part of the reason why Twin Peaks is still one of the greatest cult, if not the greatest cult TV show of all time. Hell, I prefer Twin Peaks as the greatest show of all time. You can just see season three to see why. He also did another film that I really loved a lot that I don't think gets a lot of attention is Digging Up the Marlow. Yeah, Digging Ooh. Up the Morrow is a good movie, too. Adam Green. And speaking of Adam Green, he will also be at Rock and Shock as well. If you look at this lineup, it's actually really cool because they got, um, you know, not getting too far ahead, but, like, they got Ray Wise, who's Digging Up the Morrow, and they got Adam Green, the director of it. And they got a, um, they got a lot going on for um, Twin Peaks. And, um, you know, Bill Mosley was in um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And then they got uh, Bill Johnson from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. So, you know, if you kind of really look at the thing, it's like, oh, it's kind of cool. And they've gotten more people (laughs) who have been in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Yeah. In which we'll be talking about during this preview. Yeah, it's it's cool that you look at this, um, you look at the uh, the lineup they have and, like, they were all kind of in, like, you know, the same movies or they weren't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm definitely bringing a Blu-ray to, for Adam Green to sign. And I met um, Adam Green at a, a previous Rock and Shock. Uh, he has a really cool booth. I mean, he has a like a table set up with like a ton of his Blu-rays and stuff of movies that he made. He has the Hollistons on Blu-ray, um, all his films and stuff. So the, if you're ever looking for a, any Adam Green films or anything, then that's the place to pick them up. Yeah, and he'll probably sign it for you too. Yeah, he'll sign. He'll sign. I think he signs it for you too, and um, he get you. Uh, you get the table picture with him. Yes, and I also think he also, if you bring anything to his booth, he'll sign it for you for nothing. I think. Yeah, um, I know Adam Green's another person that's in that market that you know never really jacked his autograph price up. So you know he was always good for what he was, and you know he was local. You know, so even if you have to buy an eight by ten, when I got one a couple of years ago, I think it was like only ten dollars. Yeah, it was exactly. It was. It wasn't like anything crazy. Was Probably to cover the cost of the photo. Exactly, print. and that's about it. And you know, you, you look at Adam Green's table, and there's a lot of stuff there. Like, <laughs> so if you're if you're gonna go if you're going to Rock Shock and you're gonna meet Adam Green, you know, bring some money to his table. Next up, we got Kenny Johnson, who I know mostly from The Shield. But he's been in a popular TV series called Bates Motel, which is a psycho prequel. And he's been in Sons of Anarchy, Dexter, and SWAT as well. When I uh, first heard about it, I thought it was like kind of a weird guest. I was just about to say that's you know, this is kind of a, like a Comic-Con guest, more than like a horror convention guest. But maybe since he was in Bates Motel, yeah. that's probably the... 
And of course, you need to get a Sons of Anarchy person too. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's another you know person that brings in people too because you know. Because I've seen Sons of Anarchy people really bring people to conventions. Yeah, same thing with uh, you know SWAT and Dexter too. So. Not much SWAT, but Dexter, yes. Yeah, Dexter. I know there's a. Um, I never seen SWAT, but I know there's a there's a uh, decent market for it. I know a lot of people like it and stuff. So I mean, I don't know how big of a the bringing would be for that, but um, you know, it helps. Another guest coming to Rock and Shock, and I think I've stated this before. If he appeared at any convention, I would not complain at all. And it, he is the one, the only Derek Mears. Another person from uh, Adam Green's uh, Hatchet and uh, Hatchet Three and Holliston too. He was in. I'm really hoping that he and Adam Green do another panel together because the 2016 Rock and Shock they did uh, sort of like this. We'll tell you about. We'll tell you the panel when you get there. Yeah, they're... and that's that was like a fun hour with the both of them. Yeah, they're fun together. Those two, you know, the, like I said, the, it's another. It's more of an improv type show slash panel, right? Yeah, and you know, Adam Green and Derek, they're good friends. You know, he has the history of being Adam's films and shows and stuff. So he's also got probably my most favorite convention moment as me and Derek Mears arm wrestled last year because <laughs> we pretty much reenacted that scene from his appearance in Twin Peaks. Where it was arm wrestling Evil Cooper in an arm wrestling match for control of the gang. And that felt so special. Because I originally wasn't going to get a Derek Mears autograph la- last year. But if he had that Twin Peaks photo of him and Kyle McLaughlin, I was getting it no matter what. Right. I think that is just a great scene. I think it's the best scene out of. Twin Peaks to return. And oddly enough, it took place on part 13 uh, <laughs> of the return. And the 13th connection is he also played Jason in Friday the 13th the reboot. Yep. So I was like, I was like so flabbergasted when I saw him in part 13. It's like, did somebody in David Lynch's circle <laughs> know that Derek Mears played Jason? in the editing room, decided to put that scene in Pot 13. And coming up on the, um, these next two guests, I know you're a big, big Twin Peaks fan. So I'm going to, um, I haven't seen any episode of Twin Peaks yet, I know. Um, but you can take these two guests away because I know you, you've you been really excited about them. The next one would be Cheryl and Finn. I'm so si- excited for this. Yeah, I know. Because she played... A very, very major character on the show called Audrey Horn, who is more like a dreamer t- type in the original series. In the return, her role was very limited, as it was one of the most confusing arcs of the return. She's also done a really other good film for Child's Band as well, called Meridian Kiss of the Beast, which was released in 1990. It's out on Blu-ray. One of her earlier roles. It's definitely one of my favorite Charles Band films. So I've known Charles Finn pretty much from those two projects. The other guest is Eric DeRay. He played the drug runner Leo on the original Twin Peaks show. Now, when I heard about this, I was like really bummed. <laughs> <laughs> because they originally had Cheryl Lee... And she canceled. And right? she canceled. Right, right. And they replaced it with Leo. It was like, ah. Oh. Still, I'm going to meet him. I don't mind meeting him. At least they kept it with Twin Peaks, you know? Yes, so, true. So at least they kept the Twin Peaks thing going because I remember uh, I remember you mentioning you wanted a Twin Peaks reunion. I mean, you kind of got it here, so. I got it. I also got it last year, too. Oh, at Rock and Shock? Was it Rock and Shock? He had uh, James Marshall and Dana Ashbrook there. Oh, nice. See, I'm not. <laughs> so they they must have did well enough to keep the Twin Peaks thing going. Yeah, I guess so. Which is great because that is, I think, one of the, if not greatest shows of all time. It's like it's out there, but it's one of those shows where it grabs you when it's working, like it did in the first season and parts of season two. 
and definitely Twin Peaks to return. So I really cannot wait to meet these three people. And I'll probably have the panel up on the YouTube channel because I love the show so much. And then uh, next, we have Kane Hodder, who was in Friday the 13th, 7 through 10, and also in Hatchet 1 through 3. And Victor Crowley. Um, Kane Hodd is great. Um, he's been at a ton and ton of rock and shocks. Such a fun guy to meet. You know, when you get a picture from him, he really chokes the hell out of you. So <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, Kane's uh, Kane's a great. He's a great fun guy. Big uh, big horror icon. I'm still debating who had the better grip, him or Dana De Lorenzo oh, from Ash vs. Uh, Evil Dead. Take that up with Kane at Rock and Shock. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, we got a, a really um, special guest, Adrian King, from Friday the 13th, 1 and 2. I'm really excited for this guest right here. Um, I've been wanting to meet her for a little while now, and I know she's been she's been around. I just never got the chance to uh, meet her. I'm definitely going to meet her this year at Rock and Shock. Um, pretty stoked. Um, she's such a nice person. And I, I think she's another person that has, like, a really nice table set up. You know, because I know she does a lot of her own artwork, and um, I know um, she most likely won't have it with her at the show, but she does like um these Friday the Thirteenth um wine bottle things. If I you... would not be surprised if she has some down I, there. I maybe because she's I I believe she's I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think she's from New Jersey, and I think that's where she lives. I'm not a hundred percent sure, like you said, but um, if so, then you know it's very possible, and the front to, um. To get some of those Friday the Thirteenth wine bottles there, I mean, no, it has it's, it's you know probably alcohol. gonna be expensive. Yeah, I think they're on her site because um, Adrian has a site, and um, I don't I don't remember how much the bottle was. Or if you could just purchase one, I don't remember how it was, but um, they're really they're really really cool. And um, like I mentioned, she's an artist, so she uh, does a lot of paintings and stuff, and I'm sure she'll have some at the show too. Yeah, she will probably be one of the first guests I meet at the convention. So I don't run into the situation I had at Scarecon, New England, where I was running around so much that I never got to meet Nancy from A Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. Heather Langenkamp. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to uh, make, it, um, make it a point to meet her at this convention. Because I got to probably meet her and the Twin Peaks people first. Right. Then everybody else is up for grabs. <laughs> Because this is such a stacked lineup. Very stacked. And like I said it at the beginning of this, and I'll say it again, I hope it's an autograph price list. <laughs> I really do. Uh, like, you have to, like, for a lineup like this, especially a lineup like this, you're going to have to budget what you spend, you know? It, you, there's no way you can grab every yeah, autograph. Be broke. Yeah. <laughs> Be broke. This is one of those conventions where you could easily file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you, because... I've never been to a convention where I felt that way. Yeah, me either. And uh, please, Rock and Shock, please put out a price guest list for the show so I can. That's it usually out. what happens at Rhode Island Comic Con for me. Yeah, is I have to pick and choose who I have to see. Plus, you may see someone you didn't want to see. Then me. Then all of a sudden, oh, nice person. You know what? I'll go on again. Give it. Get your autograph. Yeah, that's because that's happened to me a couple times at conventions because I've. Met people that I had no intention of seeing, and I intended, and I got their autograph. Yeah, that happens a lot at the uh, the shows too. Cause you get there, and then you have a change of mind. Like I might, for example, I might get to the show and be like, uh, "Hey, I was going in with the whole idea to meet Felissa Rose," and then be like, "Oh, you know what? You know, she's been around a lot. And uh, how much is Adrian King? You know, so it switches up like that too. It's strange once you get Plus there. Plus, she's so. there at Scarecon New, New England almost every year. Yeah, because I believe she's one of the uh, the sponsors of that show. So. She's there every year in the New England area, so, I mean, if it, you know. The next guest is a guest that I'm probably going to meet, no matter what, and it is Ken Foree. He's been in films such as Dawn of the Dead and The Devil's Rejects. He's also been in a lot of indie horror films as well. He even did a local indie horror film called Splatter Disco, which is a very weird slasher musical, but a very good one, too. And can't wait to really meet Ken Forey because he's a legend of horror. Plus, he's been in one of the greatest horror films of all time, Dawn of the Dead. So, this is definitely a guest I cannot wait to meet. I don't know if I'll get his autograph because there's like 10 million other people too. So, it's going to be very interesting, but I really want to meet Ken Forey. These next two guests are um, really cool, especially if you're a Sleepaway Camp fan. Um, they have Felissa Rose and uh, Catherine Cammy. 
Um, they were both. Uh, Kathleen played Meg in Sleepaway Camp, and everybody knows who Felicia Rose played in yes. Sleepaway Camp, right? <laughs> yeah. How about that ending? Um, hey, maybe you can discuss um, with Felicia and uh, Adrian about the, uh, the most iconic endings in a uh, campy slasher horror movie. Um, but yeah, but they're both going to be there at Rock and Chuck. You know, that's really cool. I was hoping Rock and Chuck added a couple more Sleepaway Camp guests so we get like a little reunion going mm-hmm. on. And, like, they didn't, and I was like, ah, I mean, you can't really complain because that's just, like, <laughs> more money that it would break into, but, you know. Yeah, plus you also have the Texas Chainsaw Matt Massacre reunion. Right. Um, you know, Catherine, she's, she was in Sleepaway Camp. That's all I know her from. I know she was in a couple other films, but uh, Felissa Rose, she, she's she been in um, Tales of Halloween, uh, Victor Crawley. And- One of her best, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, she's a... Uh- she also, I believe, produced... Death House as well. Yeah, and then Death House is a great movie. So, yeah, if you're a Sleepaway Camp fan, then, you know, that's going to be awesome for you. Because <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. She's also in a, another very funny comedy slasher called Caesar and Otto, Summer Camp Massacre. Definitely a film people should check out. She's very good in that as well. I hope I get the, um, you know, chance to meet. Um, I met Felicia at Scaricon, um, so I'm hoping I get the chance to meet um, Catherine at least. Now, the next one you're so familiar with Uh, is you've interviewed him on your podcast, John Dugan, a.k.a. Grandpa from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's... The original. He's such... Not not the Michael Bay remake. (laughs) He's such a, um, such an awesome guy. Like, like you just said, I had him on my show. He's a funny, you know, energetic guy. He's awesome. Um, I'm excited that he's going to be at the show. I've been wanting to meet him, too. Um, so he's definitely at the top of the, the list, um, getting an autograph for, especially after he just, uh, kicked cancer's ass. So, you know, that's awesome. So, um, I hope everybody goes out and sees John, because John's an awesome person. Yeah, this may be one of your last times to see John Dugan, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, agree. I really you should stress that enough as yeah, well. He just, he's up there in age. Yeah, he's up there in age. He just got over, um, you know, beating up terrible uh, illness, so, you know, this might be his last run at the convention circuits, so. Definitely stop by his table. I'm probably going to stop by his table, too, because I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Very good film. Plus, from your interview, he seems like he's a very fun person to be with. He's a riot. He's a riot. Go to his, go to Andrew's YouTube channel docus before dawn podcast to find that interview oh yeah you guys you you will get a kick out of it i promise <laughs> the next one is ed neil he's was the hitchhiker in the original texas chainsaw massacre and i'll stress this enough again not the michael bay remake because <laughs> today people will may think texas chainsaw massacre and they may think the michael bay remake yeah not not that one <laughs> the toby hooper movie the original he was also in another film that is like out of print on DVD called Future Kill. I've never seen it. I saw this film one time, I think, on Roku, and I could not find a copy of it, which sucks. Really, it does. You cannot find a copy of it. Then you have to go to the bootleggers, which I don't like doing, personally. Yeah. But if you're not going to put the film on DVD... How am I going to see it? You know what I mean? That's true. And own it. That's true. So, I did that the same way with Night of the Demons 3. Why that film is not on a Blu-ray yet is beyond me. Yeah, I really like that. You know, not to totally get off topic, but I like uh, Night of the Demons 3. It was, you know, fun. So, you know, I, I think, you know, eventually they should release every movie on Blu-ray. Just so you don't have to go that route like you were just saying. You know what I mean? I believe Paramount might have the rights to the second one. Hopefully we'll get a Night of the Demons 2 special edition if that's the case. Because I think they own the Republic Pictures library. Which I think that's where Night of the Demons 2 came from. So we're getting off topic here. So <laughs> um, The next guest we have is uh, Bill Johnson from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, this is like uh, this goes off of what I was saying earlier. He compliments um the Bill Mosley um announcement because they were both in um TCM two together. You know, this is another. Uh, I think he's been at Rock and Jock a couple of times, but this is another really cool guest, especially because they're going with like that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre theme. 
he did a ver very good job with uh, Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I really think he really made sure the character was in good hands. He also gave us a different take of Leatherface. As the film was pretty much a different take from the first one as is. Yeah, it was way, it was way, it was way different, but um, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, it is still one of those films that I love going back to and seeing. Yeah, definitely, it was a fun one. Next up, you have Dan Yeager, another Leatherface. Speaking of Leatherface, as he portrayed him in Texas Chainsaw 3D. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I liked the movie. Even though a lot of people did not like this movie, I thought, yet again, it was another different, interesting take on the character, which I don't mind them rebooting if they're going to honor the original while trying to do something new. Yeah, I seen it when it first came out. I went to go. I went to the movies to see it. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing. I mean, there's... <laughs> Way worse remakes, but um, it is what it is, you know. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of it, but you know, I'm not a big hater of it either. So at least it's not like Black Christmas, which is looking like it's not going to honor the original. I I'll save that thought for a future episode <laughs> because I originally was going to do the Black Christmas take on this episode. Uh, we can't. I can't even get into that right now. I can't. Oh, I will dissect that trailer. That and um, casting they got for the craft. Uh, I don't kind of want to get into that at the moment. Yeah, but uh, that's a wait and see. I want to see a trailer before I make any judgments. It's it's true. That's true. Because I've seen bad casting, and then it turns out good. Yeah, well, th there's the hope. <laughs> Next, you have Joe Kettner and Sarah French. They're always a mainstay at Rock and Shot. Sarah's been in such films as Death House. And it has a couple of films that are coming out soon that I've been getting some really good buzz from what I've been hearing. A film called Blind, Hanukkah, and Automation. And I believe she's also going to be in Out of the Dead, which is more of a horror anthology film. It looks evolving through one story. So I cannot wait to check those films out. And Joe Kettner's an author. In a screenwriter, he wrote the book I Survivor, the book that is featured in the Adam Green film Victor Crowley. And he's also wrote the screenplay for Blind, which, like I said, has been getting very good positive reviews. After that, you got comic book artist Derek Rook from Rough House Publishing. I think he's done some of the Fulci comics that have been out there. And you have author Mike. Two there. Author Mike, I was I was just gonna say I, I love that announcement. Every time Author Mike does something around like the New England area or whatever horror I love it. I interviewed him on my show, so I don't wanna like ruin that right now, but like if you wanna go over to my YouTube channel and listen to that, um he's working he did um the Unmasked, which is the uh, autobiography of Kane Hodder and everything he's been through. Um he's working on a new one. And I don't know if you know who was yet, but I don't want to spoil it here. But if you go over to my show and listen, he tells you all the information you need to know about that. He's such a fun guy. And he'll probably be hanging around Kane because they're, you know, best buddies. So Also pick up the, the DVD that he sells, The Killer and I. That is such a riot with him and Kane touring and getting into high <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah, also, Mike, he's, he's a really nice guy. Really, really nice guy. And that pretty much wraps up the guest list for Rock and Chalk. Now, we won't go into all the vendors because we'll probably be going on for another 20 minutes. Yeah, there's a lot so. of vendors. But what are some of the vendors you're looking forward to? Uh, Leia, yeah, there's a lot of good vendors. But the, um, the vendors I'm most excited to go is that Trauma booth. I can't wait to go to the Trauma vendor. I can't wait to spend all my money there. That's the one I'm most excited for. And um, I heard they were coming out with a, you know some new Trauma stuff, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be at the show. So I'm definitely excited for them. What about you? Uh, definitely Trauma. Please, Rocket Chuck, bring Lloyd Kaufman to a show. I think he's out of the country that weekend. Is he? Yes. Uh, I've met him. I met him this year. He's a fun guy. Love him. Besides Trauma and Vinegar Syndrome, of course, they're another. Of those companies that takes all my money <laughs> at conventions. We also got a very cool t-shirt company called Eclipse. I usually end up getting a t-shirt from them at almost every convention I 
they're there. I'm also looking forward to stopping by at It Came From The 508 Productions booth. Is I'm hoping to also have an interview from the head of that company there too. Because they're selling a short film called One Last Kill. Which is a very good short film. Which I picked up last year at Rock and Chuck. I hope to interview them for the podcast. And of course my friends over at The Dorkening. Which I'll probably be there for most of the time too. Because well, I love hanging out with them. Plus they're definitely f- friends of my sh- show as well. And the Doc Discussions Network. So this is a really great convention. If I have to guess what kind of panels they will have, you'll probably you'll definitely get a Twin Peaks panel, obviously. You'll definitely get some sort of Texas Chainsaw panel. And definitely get an Evil Dead one, too. And an Evil Dead one. You'll probably get it also an Adam Green, Derek Mears panel, where it is a fun hour. It'll pr- probably be another one of those improv slash panels. Definitely check that out. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that wraps everything up. This is uh, it's going to be a good year for Rock and Shock, so I'm excited. I'm pretty sure you're excited. Man. I'm very excited. I think this is one of the best years ever for this convention. Now we're going to see um, how they bounce from this great lineup for, until next year, so I'm excited how that's going to, you know. Unfold. I'm also interested to see how they handle also the Bruce Campbell lines. If it's going to be a separate room or... Uh, I, 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 I would just like think it would have to be a separate room that, because you got a lot of guests. How the like? How would you put um, Bruce Campbell in with all that? Because he's gonna he's gonna form a line. Yeah. That. So um, I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. So well, it was nice having you again on my show, Andrew. Oh man, thank you. Thank you for having. Not me. a problem. Anytime. And have a good day. Later, man. Have a podcast that you want to promote? Well, if you're interested in swapping commercials. You can promote your show here on Anthony T's Horror Show, and in return, I will promote your commercial on my show as well. For more information, contact me at anthonytshorrorshow at gmail.com. You can find Anthony T's Horror Show on social media on these platforms. Facebook at Facebook.com slash Anthony T's Horror Show. Twitter at www.twitter.com slash Anthony T's Horror. On Instagram at www.instagram.com slash Anthony T's Horror Show. On YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Anthony Thurber. And you can Find Anthony T's Horror Show on the web as well at anthonytshorrorshow.blogspot.com And you can also find Doc Discussions at www.docdiscussions.com For my film recommendation this episode, since I paid tribute to Sid Haig earlier on the show, I figured I'd recommend a film that first got me into Sid Haig. And yes, it was Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects. Now, this is Rob Zombie's best film, but Sid Haig here was very good in this film. I liked how he had a very gritty tone to the Captain Spaulding character as it was very different from House of a Thousand Corpses as in House of a Thousand Corpses I felt Captain Spaulding even though Sid Haig was good in that film to be very darkly comedic but here in Devil's Rejects we get to see Sid's full ability as he does a great job playing Captain Spaulding in the film and this is also to me, Rob Zombie's best film as well. He does a great job with the way he directs this film, as this is far better than the first film, A House of a Thousand Corpses. Is that film I felt like was a music video for 90 minutes, but Sid Haig was good in that. But what really makes me like The Devil's Rejects more than A House of a Thousand Corpses, this plays out as a straightforward horror film, then a 90s music video. I like how Zombie really takes it seriously with this film, as the kill scenes in this film are very gritty and very sh- shocking. He also gets very good performances from Haig, Sherry Moon Zombie, 
Bill Mosley's also very good in this film. William Forsythe's also very good. And even Ken Foree is very good in this film, who will be at Rock and Shock, by the way, on October 11th to the 13th. If you were to tell me what is my favorite Sid Haig film, I would have to definitely say Devil's Rejects, because he's just great in this. And plus, it's also a great film, too. And I think one of the best horror films of the 2000s. It's really sad that we will not see any more new films with Sid Haig in it, as he was a very good actor who was in such films as Hatchet 3, Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween, Galaxy of Terror, Spider Baby, Death House, and countless more films. I'm really going to miss Sid Haig as he was a very good actor. He was very kind to his fans, and he was a member of the horror community, not as an actor, but as a person. This is why I'm recommending Devil's Rejects on this episode. And I hope the memory of Sid Haig continues on for years to come. Now, over on Anthony T's Horror Show on YouTube, I haven't been able to get much content as I'm really starting to prep for Rock and Shock, which is coming up on October 11th through the 13th at the Worcester Palladium in DCU Center. So I'm probably not going to have time for any videos or anything as I'm planning on doing Rock and Shock coverage both on this podcast and over on the YouTube channel as well. As I'm planning on filming a couple of panels as well. So don't expect anything much on my YouTube channel in between now and the Rock and Shock episode. Because I'm going to be busy prepping on Rock and Shock. And the only videos that are going to come out are episodes of Anthony T's Horror Show. That's it. As I may have another episode sooner than later. With that, please visit Anthony T's Horror Show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Anthony T's Horror Show where I'm doing a skills that care drive where $200 and I'll and I'll get a named guest or try to get a named guest here on the podcast $400 I'll rent and watch the new Child's Play reboot and review it here on the podcast with that thank you for listening have a good day and support indie horror